what's going on everyone I hope you're excited just like myself I'm certainly excited and you want to know why because we've got another fantastic week of earnings and I'm gonna be excited to talk about these today with you a lot of really good companies and I, I hope you get excited so um, let's get right into this thing and uh, I got three focus stocks for the week I tried to keep it to three even though there's a lot of companies I'm really excited about here um, really excited about by the way so um, let's go ahead and get into that and uh, we're gonna start with Monday a company that uh, is pretty important look and I understand we're gonna talk about these earnings but there's a lot more pressing concerns going on right now um, in terms of macroeconomic concerns you know and, and just overall global environment um, concerns understandable um, but you know what? I think it's going to be okay. We're going to be okay, folks. Um, we're going to be okay. We're just here to talk about the earnings. If you want me to talk about that stuff, we can do it in a separate video. But we're here to talk about earnings, see how that can impact individual stocks. We start with Monday, uh, Berkshire Hathaway. What's the main focus here? Well, obviously, Berkshire Hathaway, we want to know new positions added, right? That's the entire focus of these companies when they, uh, when they report. What did they add? Um, during the quarter, what did they get rid of? Um, it definitely has a big impact on the stock's performance because retail investors will get in and out of these stocks depending on um, quite often uh, what these uh, holdings are doing. So again, uh, the funds, if they're, they're buying and selling, people will also kind of follow them for some reason as if they know what they're doing. A lot of times, you know, look, they don't necessarily. Um, and before Open Monday as well, following them, uh, Lordstown, uh, Viatris, oh yeah, fun stuff, Butterfly Networks, um, you can't expect me to possibly uh, read that. Then we have uh, Cosmos Energy, Arenia, Party City, which I still don't know how it exists. I just got to be honest with you. A company solely based that is a vast majority of the business during Halloween, and other than that, I, I mean, it's one holiday out of the year. What else do they have? It's Party City. I mean, what the heck? Who goes to Party City anymore? You can get the stuff literally anywhere. Literally anywhere. Just go to Walmart. Good grief. Um, I don't know how the company still exists, but yeah, we got to track these earnings to see what's going on. Um, how the heck it survives, I don't know. Uh, Rietta. National Vision and uh, a little bit of Lincoln uh, Educational. Okay, after close, it's one of the focus stocks for one reason. Well, Zoom, if you didn't know, has been absolutely shammered over the last year. This stock has a 52 week high of $440, now sitting right above its 52 week low, right here at 125. 52 week lows at 115, I believe. So it's right at the 52 week low. And I have to preface this, uh, we'll mention it in just a second, but let's see what they're expected in earnings. They're expected to decline from an EPS standpoint, $1.05 versus $1.22. Um, nothing crazy there. If you look at the full year, they're still expected to grow year over year, which is nice. Um, and then from a revenue standpoint, expected uh, to be the first quarter over a billion year, which is nice, uh, versus a year ago, 882, 1.05 compared to 882. Shows a 19.4% growth. Still expected to grow 53% this year. That's very nice. Um, very nice growth in revenue. We'll see if they're able to post it out. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, look, there's a lot of things I have to consider. Um, you talk about Zoom. There's a lot of reasons for why this thing has fallen to where it is. It's hard to imagine, but this stock is still trading at a price to sales over nine right now it's still trading at a market cap around 30 36 35 billion dollars i mean it's crazy with only revenue of four uh four billion even expected this year and that's 50 percent over last year so the price to sales is astronomical on this company still despite a drop of nearly 75 percent and you consider that with the fact that the company is only expecting low double-digit growth 
uh, and I mean low, low double digit growth, like the basis, not even over 20%. This does not bode well for this type of company right now, unfortunately. They do not really get those type of uh, valuations, right? The only way you get those type of valuations is, well, you got to grow by high double digits. I mean, you got to show really good growth. 15% doesn't really cut it, unfortunately. So we're going to need some really darn good guidance. Um, and hopefully they can post that off. But uh, look, video conferencing is not going anywhere. And obviously Zoom is the leader. There are multiple other avenues, though. I mean, Zoom's clearly not the only one. We have many companies using Microsoft Teams. Um, does Skype still exist? I don't know who would use Skype, but Microsoft Teams is obviously uh, a better better platform as well. But um, I like Zoom. Great, uh, it's a good platform. But uh, look, there's definitely competition, and that's going to impact their overall success. But again, work from home is not going anywhere. Neither is video conferencing uh, because people don't do in-person meetings as much. So it's very nice. Then we have Lucid Motors. I see. You know, it's relevant when you talk about. Um, uh, other EV companies. Look, Lucid, it's it's important. Blink charging, <laughs> one I used to follow, haven't followed as much. Uh, still get updates on it because I do follow it on Seeking Alpha. Um, you know, for news articles, seeing what's going on with them. Really, been schmammered. My gosh, has this one been absolutely devastated as of late? So have all the other EV stocks, um, to a large extent. I mean, this one's obviously just a charging company. Um, focused on building chargers for those uh, but my focus still I think you need to look at how is the the network developing how many units were sold in the quarter and what does that bring them up to I think that's way more important than a revenue line way more important than an EPS line for this company at this moment they need to focus on fleshing out that um, for the future so they can be the preferred charger of a lot of people um, you know, if their charges are already built there, no one else can build there. That's kind of how it is. So that's the main focus for Blink Charging. All right. Then we have HP. HPQ, by the way, because you got to know this. Really love this company. Trading at absolute dirt cheap valuation. We're talking about a P ratio under 10 on this company. How does it trade so cheap? I don't know. Um, obviously not a hyper growth company. But a company that consistently grows the dividends, I really like HP. And the earnings don't necessarily hurt me all that much, whether it's positive or negative. Look, if it's negative, I'll buy more of this company. Because um, it's trading at dirt cheap valuations with a good yield. Um, so I'm very happy about HP. I mean, what can I say? I'll look, obviously, because uh, based on the quarter, we'd see personal computing sales be a little bit better. Um, but business is still doing well too. So we'll, I'll look at the personal computing line, kind of see where laptops stand because it's a big, big item for the December quarter when you're talking about Christmas. So we'll take a peek, folks. Uh, then we have, uh, as they say in the commercial, in the most annoying tone ever, this is my direct cup. It's terrible. It's, I mean, one thing you got to understand is none of these companies can figure out how to make an ad. They can't make an ad worth a crap. I don't know if anyone else has noticed this. They all suck at ads. I don't know how this is possible. Have you ever been on YouTube? Sorry to blast you, YouTube. All the ads are freaking horrific. Either there's terrible music on it, or it's just garbage. And the only reason it would stick with you is because it's absolutely terrible, and it haunts your dreams because it's so bad. Um, but yeah, Smile Direct Club. Uh, again, I do think this is going to be in the future more of a disruptive industry than it is necessarily now they do have a lot of products um, but you talk about future future growth in terms of less physical dentistry it's weird to say in that aspect but um, I, obviously there's still room for physical dentistry but you compare this it's not necessarily a company like Teladoc but it's similar when you talk about people getting um, these products outside of you know their physical dentist uh, for teeth whitening and, and teeth health stuff like that so consider that Workday nothing crazy about Workday more companies um, turning to Workday as far as HR solutions are concerned so nice easy process for them um, so it's good for Workday for sure 3D systems 
Uh, Amberella, another one of the chip companies really focused again on guidance. That's how these companies are really surviving right now. It's, it's guidance, folks. Novavax, um, a lot of hype about this one. Uh, again, I don't follow these biotechs, so it's not one I'm super familiar with. Uh, Luminar and then Vroom. Uh, Vroom is fun, okay? I don't know. A lot of hype about Vroom just because people are buying cars online. It's a disruptive industry. I don't know who the heck would buy a car online. You've lost your mind, and I'll help you find it. And I'll help you find it by looking at none other than Target, okay? Why is Target a focus stock? Well, uh, you know, pretty decent shareholder out here. I love Target. I freaking love Target. It's an absolute great company. They're doing great things. EPS line expected to be at 286 compared to 267. Now, if we compare to what Walmart was able to do, they were able to hit right near the estimate. So, um, not necessarily the expectations are going to be the exact same, but I would kind of compare them uh, in a similar light. And from a revenue standpoint, this is wild. This is a company expected um, to grow 10 additional percentage points in revenue. 31.4 compared to 28.3. I find that to be literally insane. I mean, I don't know if that's in your ballpark there, but they have grown so significantly over the last couple of years to still be growing in double-digit lines. It's absolutely crazy. Since 2020, we're growing 10% plus each year. I mean, double-digit growth. And this is a company trading at a price to sales under one. Under one! As most retailers do, so I'm not saying that's, you know, crazy crazy, but... And Walmart posted a ridiculously massive beat on a revenue standpoint. So I would presume that you might be able to see a similar story here uh, out of Target. Not necessarily like to the tune of $2 billion, but obviously Walmart makes $100 billion and a quarter. So it's a little bit different story. But I could see a beat for sure. Really excited about Target earnings. This company is beautiful. Um, and I think this quarter we get a dividend raise as well. So we'll see what percentage they grow that by. Um, I would presume... Based off of how they've been able to grow free cash flow, I could see a 10% growth, but I also think they might just do five and be safe just to continue the streak of dividend growth, but we'll see. Um, following them, we have Workhorse. Uh, yeah, C. A lot of people love this company. A lot of people love this company. Um, still not one I, I'm too, too into, but uh, I get it. Uh, Baidu, all these Chinese stocks have been absolutely hammered. And there is no relief in sight, folks. No relief in sight. Uh, AutoZone, auto parts. I mean, there's nothing crazy about the industry right now. Nothing crazy. Kohl's, the closest thing you can relate them to is a company uh, like TJX that just reported last week. And it was a bad, bad report, by the way. A big miss in terms of earnings, uh, both off of an EPS and revenue standpoint. So... Will that spell doom for Kohl's? I, I don't know. I, I don't think so. I think department stores are still doing really good um, in terms of their business. I think they really are. Uh, and a company like Kohl's obviously a little more diversified in that aspect, but I think they're doing well. Um, recovery is really nice, and over a two-year stack, they're doing incredibly, uh, over 2019 numbers, incredibly. Domino's Pizza, a company that somehow always best the market it's always performing better than the market um, and it's just a pizza company crazy stuff to see they make them they make a nice pie okay they really do make a nice pie I'll give them credit Wendy's um, you can't make a joke but I'm just telling you, you love Wendy's nuts hit your face dude anyways UMW UWM and IQIYI which is actually look let me just tell you IQ reached two dollars the other day and this is a stock trading at Twenty dollars a few, uh, really over thirty dollars a few, uh, like a, maybe a year and a half ago. This thing is an absolute dog right now, um, and a lot of concerns over subscriber numbers here as it is a streaming company. But yeah, it's wild stuff. After close Tuesday, we have none other than the garbage AMC. I think there's positive news for AMC in the fact that, uh, well, first off, the stock's been plummeting, but. I think we've seen decent recoveries. We've seen a decent slate of movies come into theaters, actually. So could be good for them. Um, but again, I do still think that streaming will impact the overall uh, market that they'll be able to get to. But still, 
for recoveries there in the box office, and you can see it in the numbers, um, just not quite where it was before by any means. But it's getting there. It's showing some growth. Uh, SoFi, the company plummeted last earnings by you know 15 plus percent. What can they do this earnings? I don't know because the stock's still been going down, so it's hard to say. Um, all about the financials, baby. Uh, and it's going to be a tough quarter for them given the state of the market right now. Um, but we'll see. Wish.com. I don't know who buys everything on Wish uh, because they're a scam. But it's okay. If you want not not what you ordered, you can definitely order on Wish. I get it. But I, I don't know how the company's even allowed to operate. I, I don't know how this is. Uh, has anyone ever questioned how this is legal? They're literally falsely. I mean, it's false advertisement. They tell you you're getting one product, but you don't get that product. You get a, a fake product that they made in a in a sweatshop that's not even close to the product. I don't know how this company still exists. This is crazy. Because they even use the company's branding. How have they not been sued to oblivion? I just don't know. I just don't know, folks. I, I don't know. It's a wild one to me. Um, it's the Wild West out here. Salesforce a really nice company. Um, average or annualized recurring revenue. The focus for Salesforce. How many clients were they able to add? I'm really excited for them actually. Um, flow generation. Okay, baby. Okay, baby. Urban Outfitters and Nordstrom in the same uh, same boat here. I'd honestly throw Ross Dress for Less in there too. Why do you have to say Ross Dress for Less? Just say Ross, folks. Um, but clothing doing well. I mean, clothing's showing good recovery. Uh, Bio Nana, I don't like bananas. Um, it's not my favorite fruit, but I, I don't dislike them as, as much as many people do. You just get, you can't really eat a whole banana. You get tired of it. Uh, what does that have to do with anything? I don't know. Ideonomic Celsius and Big Five. Uh, Wednesday before open, we have PaySafe. Really modernized company. Um, good focus is going to be on on how many users they have. I mean, that's kind of the focus here. Uh, Dollar Tree. I do want to know what the Dollar Trees are doing, folks. I want to know how they're performing. Um, not much insight on the Dollar Trees, or the Dollar Stores, I should say. Um, Abercrombie and Fitch, same thing here with Nordstrom and Urban Outfitters. Expect similar numbers. Um, Global Ship Lease, uh, Astronics, Donaldson, uh, Patterson, a lot of Suns, okay? Dicom and Hayward uh, and Dine. After close, Wednesday, Charge Point. We have Snowflake, which is really exciting. Um, American Eagle Outfitters. How many clothing brands are going to be reporting, folks? There's too many clothing brands out here. But I'm really interested in Snowflake, obviously. Um, really fun company. Uh, very future. Very, you know, uh, let's say modernized for the future. I don't know. They're prepared for the future uh, in the business model. C3, uh, Okta, uh, Coupang. Splunk, again, similar business model there to Snowflake. Uh, when you talk about data, uh, data analysis, really exciting stuff from these companies. Box, Victoria's Secret, more clothing, folks. Viva, uh, wannabe Velveeta, that's for sure. And Grief, Thursday, before open, another retailer in Best Buy. The electronic segment, I really don't necessarily have an insight on. I typically would, um, but I don't. Uh, Best Buy, I mean, they closed down so many stores. A few years back, I'm surprised that they're still they're still doing pretty well. Um, but I guess that's what happens. You close down some stinkers of stores, and then you you manage to do well in the ones that are performing well. It's, it's you know it's all about business analysis, folks. Uh, Billy Billy Burlington more more clothing more clothing. Okay, uh, clothing retailers. Then we have a grocer a grocer in here with Kroger. Um, now Kroger is you know known for uh, being big Kroger and they're they're nonsensical. You know the government's calling them out. Uh, the hip hypocritical politicians are calling out Kroger. What's Kroger going to respond with, folks? Uh, Toro, Big Lots, another one of the uh, dollar store type. Uh, BJ's, definitely one of my favorite. Not the company, uh, but we have TD Bank after them. Financial still doing okay, but there's going to be a lot of concern when we talk about global banking given current events, as we should say. Am I allowed to talk about Russia? I don't know if I am. Does that ban you? It's only China that gets you banned, I think. So I'm going to talk about Russia, not China. 
Um, uh, Southerly after them fun stuff after close my last focus stock is going to be Costco because I love freaking Costco the company's able to do ridiculous numbers trading at high valuations but doing ridiculous numbers uh, 274 expected in an EPS line versus 214 of a year ago really impressive if they're able to pull that off um, but again there's concerns with as far as inflation that certainly has an impact overall on the EPS line so consider that but from revenue expected, expected to grow massively here. Um, really nice uh, expectations of around 15%. Um, 44.7 of a year ago. Expected to be 51.29. And again, my main focus with a company like Costco is going to be on the uh, membership numbers. That's how they make an entirely all their profits. So the only way they hit their profit line uh, is going to be off of memberships because that's a 100% profit business. Nice. I mean, similar with other subscription models, obviously. It's a 100% profit. The subscription's a 100% profit. But they also sell products with low single digit profits as well. Some products they sell at a loss. Um, and they will never, despite inflation, change the price of that rotisserie chicken, folks. That's what's good about Costco. Consistent business. They care about, you know, they give you the best deals. Uh, Broadcom, following them. Chips. It's all about chips, folks. Um, guidance again is the focus. Marvell, we have the gap. Um, I'm more focused on the baby gap because I have to shop at the baby gap given the fact that I'm a 24 year old man who looks like he's in middle school besides the beard. So, uh, Smith and Wesson, I love it, man. <laughs> I get banned for that. I get banned for that. I can't do that. But, uh, great surge in 2020. 2021, kind of the same. People buying a lot of guns and ammo. Still having issues uh, finding some, let's be clear. Uh, but they've managed a lot better, and the inventory line on the balance sheet should look a lot better. That's kind of what uh, would be a big focus for me. Uh, Elastic, I throw in there with Splunk and Snowflake in a similar business model. Really great company. Uh, really great company, what they're able to do. Quanex, Evoke them. Uh, Funko. Uh, it's wild that Funko's so big. I don't get why Funko's so big still. I still don't, folks. They don't look anything like what they're supposed to. I get it's supposed to look cute or something. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what that means. I don't know what cute means. It doesn't look like what it's supposed to, folks. Um, then Friday before open, uh, CLTS, uh, Great Batch Medical, Hibbit Sports, Intest Corporation, uh, Rapid Micro, and Silvercrest. That's what I got for you. This is a long one, folks. I love you. Hope you have a great day.